Hi, I'm Stavros. Good morning and welcome! And yes, it is another one of those YouTube videos where I tell you things I don't like about what it is I'm driving, which is in this case the Scania S580 and just the S series in general. So I'm just going to walk around the exterior, then we'll hop inside and show you some of the interior fixtures and fittings that need improving upon. So yeah, let's get to it. The things I don't like about the S series. Okay, so I've clocked up about 20,000 kilometers on this truck so far. And yeah, I've got to know the truck and some of the things I like, some of the things I don't like, but this video will focus on the things we don't like, okay? So we shall start straight away with the side locker. So it's as good a way as any to start. Okay, so the top locker, absolutely fine. You pull your cord, it pops out and you can get your finger in, open it up. That's pretty easy enough. Now, um, so it's not the case with the bottom locker. So you open that and it's not popping out. So say for instance, you're walking up to the locker and you've got straps in one hand and you go to open up this, how are you gonna open it up? Uh, you won't be able to, you'll have to put all the straps down and then use both hands to open it up. And not only that, but even getting your fingers underneath there is no recess to get your fingers properly in to open it up. And it's even worse if you're wearing gloves. So yeah, this needs a bit of a rethink. Uh, maybe it should be a pop-out design, just like the top locker. So that's just one element uh, I don't really like. So yeah, let's just move around the chassis area here. Now you see the, the uh, mudguard uh, bar that holds it on there to the chassis. Uh, there's just no proper gap to clean in between it. So stones will accumulate in here and it's just very hard to get any bit of a proper cleaning job in here. So why didn't they have just a, a little half inch gap even? Just so you could get a cloth in there and clean it. Uh, just a small piece of a, um, a bit of a design rethink would have been nice on that one. By the way, it didn't come with these two side marker lamps. These were blanks. So one and one on the other side. Uh, it did come with those ones. So why didn't it come with two more? I don't know. Uh, it also didn't come with wheel chocks. So it should have at least have come with one, but luckily enough, these were fitted free of charge down at T. Nolan and Sons. So thanks for that. Uh, moving around, just another small little clip here that just came loose off the uh, breather pipe but it's pretty easy enough, just tighten it up. So yeah, I'll just tighten that clip back on. It's only a breather pipe when you're filling up with Add Blue. And let's just hop up onto the chassis here. And now, of course, the Susies, it would have been nice just to have a complete redesign of these and have them positioned in the middle of the truck and not to one side. Uh, anyway, this, um, okay, the winding bar, it's a great idea to be able to wind up your top wind deflector. Fantastic, but this little clip here that holds it on, uh, very, it's, it's gonna fall off very easily. So uh, yeah, I nearly should have opted for the electric option for the top wind deflector because it's fine if you're on a main road, you know uh, you're not gonna damage it, but if you're diverted off a main road, uh, you're gonna damage that on low trees. So uh, yeah, maybe I should have uh, got the electric option for the top wind deflector. Okay, so let's uh, just let's just talk about the doors here. Um, just the sound of the doors closing. I mean, could they not have done <laughs> a more of a robust sounding door? Uh, if I move over to the previous truck I used to drive, I clocked up 622,000 kilometers on this Scania R560. Just listen to the doors on this. They sound far more solid, don't they? Than all of the, uh, the next generation Scanias. And oh yeah, if I zoom up on the top there, I need to fix the cover for the air horn. You can see it's a bit bent there. So yeah, going down some country roads in Ireland, uh, a lot of the councils are not very good at clipping the tops of the trees and they do damage all of the trucks, not just this truck. <laughs> So uh, yeah, and if I move on to the bumper here, 
So uh, yeah, you get your cab tilt bar and you stick it in here and you have your cab tilt pump at the side. Why isn't there a cover on this? They never seem to come with the covers. If I move over to the other side of the bumper, you will notice we have a cover. So I don't know why they never come with the cover on the cab tilt um, pump. I, I just don't know. <laughs> but anyway, that's just another uh, little thing that is a gripe. Now, in case any of you guys are wondering, do these dr gloves stay dry? Now, I always leave them there uh, when I'm driving. I don't put them in the cab. And the, qu uh, the answer is that they don't really get wet at all. Only unless it's really heavy ra rain will they, will they get a bit wet and not even that wet. So um, I used to do it with the previous truck, uh, keep them on the top step. And if there was any bit of rain at all, they'd get wet. But these are very good. Uh, they hardly get wet at all up there. So uh, yeah, that is just one thing there. Um, let's just, uh, oh yeah, the, uh, the mat, okay. Now these mats, uh, they are a Scania mat, but they're not a uh, very good design because it's too flat here in this area and all the dust and dirt just lays there and blows in to the middle of the truck, um, being a flat floor, of course. Why didn't they just design it with all these grooves and make the grooves maybe a bit deeper so that it would contain more of the dirt? So I just use this microfiber cloth uh, just to kind of hold a lot of the small dust uh, just to stop it from blowing in to the middle of the truck. Uh, that's just one, another a little area that may need improving. So yeah, let's move on to the bunk area. Now, if you send the truck in for a service, they're obviously going to be tilting the cab. So why isn't there a net or an opportunity to get a net and tie it from the top of the bunk up to the lockers? just to contain all of the bedding, so the bedding doesn't fall out when you tilt the cab. Now, a net did come with the truck. That's it right there. But that net <laughs> is no good for this truck. It's only for a truck that has a, a bunk up on top. So um, there was actually no need for that net to have come with this truck at all. So uh, <laughs> yeah. now moving on to the passenger side seat, I would have preferred if it was one of the fold up um, seat base design seats because uh, it would have given you more space underneath. So this passenger seat is on full air, which there's no real need of because I hardly ever carry a passenger. But yeah, it would have been far better if it was just the basic seat option where you can fold it up and you have extra walking space all along the passenger side. Uh, that is my printer, by the way. It saves me so much time in a day to be able to plug it in using the inverter um, yeah, it's uh, very, very helpful. Moving on to the uh, infotainment display. Uh, it would have been nice if the volume button was over here, uh, the volume knob, uh, instead of uh, over there. <laughs> but uh, left-hand drive bias, you know how it is, guys. Now, you'll notice um, every time you start up the truck, the aircon is not on. So I can turn it on, and then if I knock off the truck, Okay, you see I put it on, I start it up again, and there you go. It has defaulted to off, all on its own. So yeah, if you're doing multi-drops in a day, it is a bit of a pain having to continuously turn that on every time you turn on the ignition. Uh, moving on to the taco. Now all of your driver's hours and all of that obviously are displayed up on this taco, uh, but they're not mirrored on the display here. So on the previous truck, they were mirrored on the display. So it's very good just for keeping an eye on your driving hours when they're right in front of you here. Um, you know, you, I, I suppose you could look up here, but it still was nice having it displayed in front of you there. This is probably the most used button I press every time I set off. It's the lane departure warning switch. So it, every time I hop in, um, I have to continuously press that off because uh, it is uh, really annoying. Now, it would be nice if it was maybe speed based where you drive over a certain speed and then it turns on. But um, even when you're driving at slow speeds uh, down some narrow roads, it will start buzzing at you. So, yeah, I continuously have to turn that off. And yeah, the rear reversing buzzer, uh, it doesn't seem to be working properly at the moment either for some reason, so I might have to get Nolans to look at that. 
and anything else I oh yeah the um when you are in heavy rain okay the rain lodges up here at the top of the door between the frame and the seal and when you open the door the rain just drops down on top of the switches here so there is a little rubber piece that you can buy as an option uh, I have it ordered and I'm going to get it fitted the next time I'm down for a service so hopefully it will improve it to some degree although I've heard it doesn't really improve it that much and if I just talk about the doors for a minute now when this truck was uh, new when we collected it there was there was a bit of a gap between the door and the frame um, a bit of a bad panel gap uh, when you compare it to the passenger side uh, that was something that Nolan said they could fix but uh, it was really beyond me how it even left the factory in France with such a wide door panel gap uh, I really don't know how it even passed quality control with the gap you see you don't really notice the gap now because we had this black glass panel and the chrome piece fitted so you don't really notice it but yeah if you were to look really closely you'd see there is an extra gap on the top of the door compared to the passenger side so yeah um oh yeah i forgot to show you something else on the inside uh let me hop up again now the sun visor i have mentioned this about three and a half years ago <laughs> okay when i first drove the s580 uh over three and a half years ago um, okay, so you're driving down the road, you've got early morning, morning sun Sunday and evening sun and it's shining here in on top of you. So why don't they have something like Renault or Volvo where you just slide out something. Renault have the push button thing and it just pops down and it covers in this gap. This, okay, it'll extend, it extends it down but it doesn't slide over. This doesn't slide over to block the gap. So... Yeah, no idea why this has not been improved upon. Um, this truck, remember, came out <laughs> towards the second half of 2016. It's not as if it came out two years ago. Okay, let me now show you where the fuse board is located in the Scania S580. But just before I show you, let's remind ourselves where the old fuse board was located in the R560. So, pop that up. You'll remember we have the fold-out table just like the S580 and we also have storage underneath but it's quite easy to get into the fuse board just one clip here and one clip here and lift that out and there you go straight into the fuse board and it's quite well located because when you have your light from the ceiling shining down you can see the fuses at night so yeah and just uh, clip it back in there close it up and that's it let's have a look at the s580 okay so this is where the fuse board is located in the s580 in behind this panel so let me just show you how to get into it now this panel here has to come off first so you get your two fingers into this hole see that hole two fingers in and pull and get your hand in here there you go that panel has to come off now I suppose the good thing about this is you don't need any tools to get into the fuse board. Now there is a little clip here that you have to turn clockwise. Turn that clip and give it a small little pull. There you go. Now it's out of its little holding point. And you need to pull at the bottom. Two hands in. You'll feel two little recesses underneath here. Get your two hands in and pull. <laughs> I never, <laughs> never like doing this in case I break something. Ah! There we go. Pull that out and pull at the top here and ah, out you go slide it out so yeah that is uh it's easy enough to get into but it's just it's just awkwardly located because when it was located up on top um it was good having the light from the ceiling shining on the fuse board and you could see easily without a torch what fuse you were changing i mean with it located here you definitely need a torch <laughs> because i changed the the fuses at night and I did need a torch to be able to see what fuse I was changing but yeah just another little bugbear um, so it's a bit awkwardly located and it's not as easy to get into as the previous generation <laughs> so getting on to the subject now of polishing the tanks on the S580 I like to use Autoglim metal polish uh, this is not an ad but I just thought I'd give them a mention some people use white diamond I prefer this product but anyway somebody was asking um, what do I use to wash my cloths? So one thing you don't want to do is take them home 
because if you stick all these cloths into the washing machine, then your next wash of clothing is gonna end up smelling like polish. And you don't wanna do that. <laughs> you won't be um, liked by your partner, wife. But anyway, so this is what I use. I just put the polish onto the uh, little sponge here and rub it in. Now, of course, you can use a machine polisher. Uh, that makes it a lot easier, but the machine polisher spreads a lot of polish all over the place, which means you have to mask up all the straps and even along the chassis here because the polish would just spray everywhere. So you gotta be careful with the uh, electric polisher. But sometimes I use the electric polisher when I want to give it a good polish and then I just keep on top of it just by doing it manually. So as you can see, look, if we get a clean side there and just rub it in like this, so you've got to get off all of the heavy polish that you've just laid on the tank. And then you see it there, all of the black. And then we get a clean section and we buff it out. So just polish it up there and just giving you a quick demonstration of the polish. So yeah, I've I polished this a few weeks back and now just keeping on top of it, keeping it nice and clean and shiny. So yeah, let's just show you now how I wash these cloths without using a washing machine. So this is the chemical we use for cleaning all the trucks, but don't put it on your diesel tanks. Your aluminium diesel tanks is gonna stain them and you'll be ages getting it off the tank. But anyway, let's just pour a small bit into the little drum here. And I'll show you what we will do. So that's enough. We will... Uh, then put our cloths into the drum. Okay, so what you could also do is put the chemical into a drum and wash your cloths manually. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do it the easy way, which is putting all of the cloths into the drum. And I'll show you what I do then, guys. <laughs> That's the easy part. Anyway, let's put all of these in. Give it a good shake on around and then we put the drum up this way so the hole is pointing to the top okay not to the bottom okay up that way put a drum here so that all of the chemical come out can go into the drum and then we can reuse the water if you want okay so anyway this is it guys use the power washer stick it into the drum and then wash them so Simple as this. Okay, let's get them out. Quite easy to do. Pull them all out. And I'll just show you how clean they all came out. So let's pull them all out. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's all of them, I think. Oh, one more. Yeah, this is my little, yeah, my polishing cloth. So that came out pretty clean as well. So this is the result, guys. Look at the cloths, look. So uh, I think they came out all pretty clean, as you can see, all uh, back to normal. This one has some stains on it, you'll never get out. But some of you are probably wondering, why don't you use normal washing powder, like for clothes, but it doesn't do as good a job as that chemical. That chemical is really strong, and it really gets them up nice and clean. You remember how dirty this one was, look. <laughs> so yeah, a few minutes in your drum, which then becomes the washing machine. So yeah, it's as easy as that, guys. And uh, squeeze them out, let them dry, off you go. So yeah, that is pretty much all there is to uh, mention about the S series. Oh, <laughs> there is something else again I have to show you. Also the hazard warning switch, you'll notice it's positioned towards the middle of the dashboard. Now Scania did this with the newer trucks. I have no idea why. That switch was positioned over here on all of the older trucks for decades. And there was nothing wrong with it here because you could stand on the ground, reach up and still turn it on and off. But if you forget now, you gotta climb all the way back in and then reach over and turn it on and off. So yeah, why was that position there? I've no idea. 
Also the handle here, it comes the whole way down. Uh, the handle should have ended maybe about here because if you're climbing in, you're banging it. Or if you're going out, you're also banging that handle. So um, yeah, maybe the handle should have ended up here somewhere. The window switch is up and down. Uh, I kind of question the robustness of these switches over time. Uh, I really hope nothing's going to happen to them. Um, the older switches, the rocker switch, there was nothing wrong with that design. But these ones where you're kind of pulling and pushing down, you know, like how long are they going to last? We have yet to find out, but I would have actually have done the rocker design on these. Uh, yeah, probably the worst thing, guys. The windscreen is cracked. Yeah, so that's not good. Now, it was a small little chip and it spread over time. Now, I could have had this fixed, but um, yeah, the windscreen company said, uh, oh, we're booked up for the day. And in the space of 24 hours, this had spread. So now it needs a whole new windscreen. Now, the previous truck I drove to this one, the R480, that had its windscreen replaced because of a chip. And let's just hope that the windscreen company replaced this properly and that it doesn't leak like the last truck did. And they had to do two more visits before they eventually stopped the seal from leaking. So yeah, I'm just hoping now that the truck will not have a leaking seal once that windscreen is fixed. So there we have it guys. They are the things I don't like about the Scania S series. So are you a driver that's also driving one of these trucks? What is it that you don't like about them? Make sure you comment below. But you gotta remember, none of these trucks are perfect. If it was a Volvo, a Mercedes, a DAF, a Renault truck, I'd still be making the same video. There's always something about them that needs improving. But of course, the truck manufacturers are improving them all the time. So um, hopefully they will be watching the video. Who knows, maybe they won't. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I just thought I'd give you an update as well. I mean, with these trucks, it would be nicer as well to have maybe a, a longer service interval. The service intervals for this truck are 35, 30,000 kilometers, so maybe a bit of a longer service interval would be nice also. But you gotta remember, this truck is actually performing very, very well. I'm getting 9.7 miles per gallon out of this truck. This truck, the R560, was only always giving me 8.7, maybe nine at the most. This truck, I've got it up to 9.9 .9 miles per gallon, which is the best so far. So yeah, overall fuel consumption is very good for a truck with a V8 engine, 3,000 newton meters of torque. So yeah, that's going quite well. But overall guys, I'm very happy with the truck and that is where it ends. <laughs> so yeah, I do hope you found the video somewhat informative. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and I'll chat to you all again next weekend for another video. Take care guys, thanks. Cheers! And you'll be glad to hear guys, we have a brand new windscreen put into the S580, no more crack, and it doesn't leak because we had a lot of rain during the week and thankfully no leaks. So that is great news, a big thumbs up.